was so unusually sort of charming, touching, uh, funny, sad. It had everything in it. It had, it had extreme tender relationships. It, it was just filled with a, a marvelous conglomeration of heart and, uh, and, and bravery and all sorts of similar things. And I thought, what a wonderful script. And then I found out that it was his story of his own family and that the part I was to play was, was uh, his father. And I thought, oh my God, that's going to be difficult because he's going to insist that I do certain things that I wouldn't, couldn't possibly know his father did. And uh, he said, absolutely not at all. You must be as free as you, you must be yourself and as free and as, as you can. And uh, don't worry about imitating my father. I, I'll come in every now and then and say he, he, he did this or that and, and throw in a few suggestions. So I thought, yeah, what, what is we were practically beginning already, and this was still on the telephone. His instinctive behavior on the set was, was so professional and so easy and comfortable that we were as, it wasn't like acting at all in front of the camera, we just were. And every now and then we, he would ask us to ad lib if we needed to do that to make the situation look more spontaneous. And, and, uh, and we did, it was one of the most pleasurable movies I've ever made. And I'm not just saying that because I'm sitting here. Everyone be, has to begin again. They, 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 they've inherited qualities from him and, and the mother. But Ewan has to begin all over again. He, he has to form a relationship with a dog that his dad left behind. And he has to form a relationship with his young girlfriend, played wonderfully by Mélanie Laurent. Uh, and so that is why it's called beginners because everybody begins again. It's very, very personal. It's also universal. It's a, it, it reaches everybody. Everybody in the audience at one point has had some sort of problem like this. And, it, it, and it's rather heartening that it's dealt with in a, in a positive light manner rather than a heavy, plodding, self-pitying kind of way. He's just so intelligent. He loves words. He's got a really sharp wit, you know, and that's so Hal to me. That's so Peace My Dad, but also this character I created that started with my dad, but it became something else. And the key first thing with both of them was, do not imitate me, my dad. Do not stare at me. <laughs> do not, do not feel locked in. You have to like own this. You have to like make it yourself. I'm not precious about it. I do not want to be mimicked. You know, it's, this is just the starting point. We have to like take it out into the world now. And they both in different ways got that more than I even knew what I was saying. Like they, Christopher so understands story and how he is a part of a story and how even just in one scene and one shot, he'll divide it into pieces of a story that grows. So that's like just keen in his mind. The dog thing did become really key and central, but it started in this really organic way. But it's, he's not talking. I hope everybody gets that. He's not talking. It's, it's Ewan's projections. And in that way, it became a really great storytelling device because in lots of ways, Oliver's character doesn't, he's not in a terribly um, obvious character. So with the drawings and with the talking to the dog, it was a, strange back door into his mind. Here I am, a straight guy, straight son of a gay dad. And my dad, you know, he came out when he, when he was 75. I was, what, 33. And I, I was, you know, and I loved this gay dad. This guy was really interesting and kind of on fire. And, and really, to my great relief, not about to die. Because after my mom passed away, there you got your widowed father, and you're like teaching him how to defrost food and buying him clothes. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's going to French Connection on his own, and he's going to like prime timers and coffee circle and this and that, and you're just so thankful, and you're so happy and, and emotionally alive. The blurriness between what is real and what is not real which to me is a whole theme of the movie, like who's my real dad, the Velveteen Rabbit, what is real, when are you real, for Oliver, what is real love, when am I real? Um, so 
it's very real in a way, but along that theme, it's very unreal. It's my version, it's my dream of what might happen with my dad, and it's fictionalized. Really, I'm trying to give the world a piece of what my dad gave me, and that, it, you know, it's just really simple. Like, just when you think you're not going to change, or someone's not going to change, or something can't change, or something so stuck, or something so numb, or something is so without life, that that's where you're going to be, it can change. And I'm really, I need reminding of that all the time. Things can change, things can get better. Arthur, you're coming to live with me now, okay? That's the bathroom. This is the living room. This is the dining room where people come and eat sometimes. Look, it's lonely out here, so you better learn how to talk with me. This is 2003. This is what the sun looks like and the stars. This is the president. And this is the sun in 1955, and the stars, and the president. My parents got married in 1955. They had a child, and they stayed married for 44 years until my mother died. Six months later, my father told me he was gay. I'm gay. I remember him wearing a purple sweater when he told me this, but actually he wore a robe. I'm gay. He was gay the whole time they were married. Oliver, I just met a girl. You point, I'll drive. This one? <laughs> Oliver? Yeah. They had some wonderfully loud music in the club tonight. Insect, 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 insect. What kind of music's that? Probably house music. Yeah. House music. <laughs> okay. House, house music. The bronchoscopy revealed a mass. Well, it's not rush out and tell everyone. Sometimes I wonder Before Anna, I had four serious relationships. I let all of them fall apart. Just be happy about it, huh? For the first time I saw I'm really in love. And I am once again with you. People like us, half of them think things will never work out. The other half believe in magic. And each kiss and inspiration Sex, life, healing, nature, magic. The memory of love's refrain. This is what I'm supposed to feel like. Yeah, me too. Oliver? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sorry I woke you. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Akbar tonight. You did? Yeah, no, they had some wonderfully loud music. <laughs> oh, what kind of music's that? Probably house music. Yeah. House music. <laughs> okay. House house music. Well, maybe you should take out a personal ad, you know, where you can explain your situation. My situation? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you, you want to be in a relationship, and you can't stay in one. That's your fatherly advice, personal ads. Well, a lot of people use them. <clears throat> I did. What? If Andy wasn't going to be monogamous, why should I be? Pop. Yourself. I did. Hey, what'd you get? That omen. <laughs> Very serious. And I found <laughs> this crazy book. <laughs> That's kind of a classic American thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can figure out some classic American things to do. Yeah. 
like 75. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh. Or 75 all the way through, through 80. <laughs> I couldn't tell him. That's okay. No, it's not. You can't hide this from him. He loves you. For someone with so much relationship advice, you seem awfully alone. Just act natural. When he's not looking, we'll make a run for it. Okay? <laughs> 